Sports Illustrated magazine was first launched on August 16, 1954 by Henry Luce, founder of Time Inc., one of the world's largest and richest publishing empires. Luce, who had no real passion for sports, had previously been responsible for magazines like Fortune, Life, and House and Home, and he is noted for creating the modern news magazine, helping shape the reading habits, political attitudes, and cultural taste of millions. Luce launched Sports Illustrated against the advice of his most trusted aides, who viewed the starting of a weekly magazine devoted solely to sports as an expensive, misguided, and inherently trivial folly. At, at that time, many believed that sports was beneath the attention of serious journalism, as spectator sports were commonly viewed as a blue-collar proposition and sports fans as juveniles and never do -wells. Despite criticism, Luce believed that Sports Illustrated could thrive. He wanted to capitalize on what he called the wonderful world of sport and a more abundant leisure available to Americans after World War II. It is noted that the very first issue enhanced the popularity of sports like no other magazine before or since. The magazine got off to a rocky start, though. It was not profitable and not well run. However, the timing of the magazine proved to be perfect. The popularity of spectator sports began to increase thanks to a multitude of events. The RCA introduced the first color television sets. The Boeing 707 took to the skies, presaging a time when sports teams could travel from coast to coast in truly national leagues. Frozen TV dinners were introduced by Swanson & Sons and rock and roll was emerging, along with a new consciousness of teenagers as viable customers. People flocked to the suburbs. There were sports games to watch on television, and major league ballparks sprouted up in minor league towns such as Atlanta, Minneapolis, Kansas City, and Oakland. The money in sports grew, and so did everyone's admiration for it. In the 1960s, Sports Illustrated strayed away from the bumpy road and took a turn for the better with the help of new managing editor Andre Laguerre, a British journalist who caught the eye of Luce. Laguerre more than doubled the circulation of the magazine by instituting a system of departmental editors, redesigning the internal format, and using full-color photographic coverage of the week's sporting events. Under his command, Texas sports writers joined the staff, enlivening the magazine with their lucid, profane, and unapologetic prose about the central role of sports in modern society. That, mixed with Laguerre's European sophistication, created the blueprint for modern American sports journalism and the quintessential American middle-class magazine of the post-war era. In the years following, Sports Illustrated legitimized sports, playing a significant part in the changing of the role of sport in society. Throughout the years, some of the most well-known athletes have graced its cover and inside issues. Sports Illustrator subscribers did more than just read the magazine. They seemed to absorb it. In 1976, a New England journalist by the name of John Hubbard wrote, Sports Illustrated has become an addiction with me. It was also described by tennis professional Chris Everett as the Rolex of magazines. It reimagined an adult world in which sports wasn't just a pastime, but a central component. Although becoming highly successful, Sports Illustrated has faced backlash over its coverage of male and white athletes. All feature articles between 1954 to 1987 were examined with reference to sport, gender, race, role of the person featured, and descriptive characteristics. In summary, the sporting achievements and lives of males were acclaimed in 90.8% of the 3,723 articles. Blacks were featured in only 22.4% of the feature articles, although having a large percentage in baseball, basketball, and football. Articles about males and whites were longer on average than those about females and blacks as well. In addition, females were characterized in blatantly sexist terms and stereotypically portrayed. Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue, which has been published since 1964, has also received a lot of feminist controversy over the years over its supposed exploitation of women, leading to the cancellation of thousands of subscriptions. Nowadays, Sports Illustrated is one of, if not the, most popular sports magazine out there, with a total readership of over 23 million people and over 3 million subscribers, causing it to have the third highest subscription circulation in America. Other publications have also sprung from the Sports Illustrated franchise, including Sports Illustrated for Kids, Sports Illustrated on Campus, and the Sports Illustrated Almanac. Luce, who passed away in 1967, was unable to witness the overall success of his once doubted magazine, but his magazine and its influence on the world of sports journalism will live on forever.